For that, now it's time for our top story. Yeah, Kaya Edwards has been out at a homeless camp in St. Paul all morning uh, talking to folks there who are getting kicked out today. She sure has. So let's check in with Kaya. Kaya, what can you tell us about this day? Yeah, time is really running out. So last time I checked in with you at 5, I was telling you about how I forgot my gloves. Since then, I went in the car, had the heat on full blast, I grabbed my hat, and I'm still just kind of chilled to the bone. So I really do feel for the people who are right here living in these tents. But yes, time is running out. I counted about 10 tents here. It's a little hard to say how many people are in each tent, but by 10 o'clock this morning, they'll all have to go. We checked in with the city's director of safety and inspections. He says agencies from the state, the city, the county, they're going to have some people here uh, helping the people living in tents gather up their belongings. They'll also try to connect them with services, and then they'll also try to offer them some rides if they want them. Now, we want to show you this uh, video from September of the encampment. It's near I-35E, that's where we are, not far from downtown St. Paul. And as you can see, it's not as big as the encampment in Minneapolis, but still at one point, 70 people lived out here. Now, most of them have already moved away, some leaving their tents behind. And so the city is pointing everyone though to the winter safe space that they have. It's a temporary shelter uh, within the basement of the Ramsey County Government Center. So they're working with the county on that. And this year they did open it up a little earlier than last year. And they've also extended the hours. They also added 14 more beds. The thing is though, uh, it's an overnight place. So people can come in at 10 o'clock at night and by referral only. The requirements for that though to get in are low. It's that you have to have no other options for housing and uh, they just want to make sure also that you're not a threat to yourself or to others. So that kind of leaves the question, all right, maybe they'll get in at night, but how about during the day? The city is saying uh, there are options like skyways and the libraries around St. Paul. They're also um, talking about transitional housing. That's more of a, uh, um, it's more of a uh, like permanent place as opposed to a, a shelter. So, um, or a transitional place. So they're pointing people to there. It's called um, higher ground. And the goal there though, is to help people get back on their feet so that they can then move out uh, to hopefully their own home. So that's the latest. Again, time's running out here and we will send it back to you. Kaya, thank you. We do have some breaking news this morning. A tense situation this morning at the U.S.-Mexico border. You can see some of the video right there. This video is just into a newsroom in Tijuana, Mexico. The migrant caravan arrived overnight and they clashed with some of the locals who want them out. Other residents welcomed the migrants, bringing them water, food and clothing. Uh, we'll continue to follow this story. Now let's get to Chris. Here's your morning rush. Authorities are combing through debris this morning after a broken valve caused a gas explosion in North Mankato. Police say technicians at Peterbilt were working on a natural gas powered garbage truck when they noticed a leak. It caught fire as they rushed to escape. Police say a 59 year old Ellendale man suffered first and second degree burns on his stomach and chest. The fight for 15 is now a reality in St. Paul. Yesterday, the city's mayor signed a minimum wage increase of $15 an hour into law. It will be phased in by 2025 for all businesses. The move follows the footsteps of Minneapolis, which made the jump this past summer. Joe Maurer has a lot to celebrate this week. Just five days after announcing his retirement from the Minnesota Twins, Maurer and his wife welcomed a baby boy named Charles Joseph. This is the couple's third child. They also have twin daughters. Oh, God. All right, in Digital Dive this morning, we're talking about the raging wildfires in uh, both Northern and Southern California. More than 50 people have been confirmed dead. Uh, and search and rescue missions are still underway. 130 people still unaccounted wow. for. So let's give you some visuals of what's going on there this morning. So this first video, uh, take a look at this. This is out of Malibu. You can see the fires wow. are just out of control there. The next video, you can see just how close to the highway. This is out of Simi Valley, California. You can see a uh, chopper there dropping water, trying to get that out. And this is actually a student, uh, this next video out of Camarillo, 
uh, California. The student was evacuated. You can see right behind him how close those fires are to his That is school. so close. Isn't that frightening? So yeah, yeah we're going to keep you posted on this. Um, I mean, it's very unfortunate for all the people in California. Just devastating. All the pictures of people's homes before and after. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. And the fact that so many people are still unaccounted for, yeah, too. I 130. Mean, yeah. Well, we're going to switch gears because why are we here at Elsie's? Well, it's not only one of Alicia's favorite spots, but we are Guilty. unzipped in northeast Minneapolis showing you the people, the issues, the, the great places around here. The good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> and coming up, we're talking about the issues that people here in Northeast face. But first, uh, we're gonna go to Sven for the one thing weather. Hey, Sven. Good morning. Hey, you know, we thought we would give the ostrich some love. They're right next door to the giraffe and they've been kind of looking at the camera, preening their feathers and such. See, there you go. They look like giant, uh, giant feather dusters. So yeah, ostrich are not endangered, that's good, but they're still pretty cool. Flightless birds, they front kick. Anyway, we're looking at a mild day today. Temperatures headed back in the mid 40s, probably a couple degrees warmer than yesterday. And it's a warmer start too, so it's gonna be a milder day all day long. More sunshine, but some changes on the way. We're talking a little light snow and colder temperatures by the time we head into tomorrow. All right, Sven, thank you. Hey, we are unzipped in Northeast Minneapolis at Elsie's, one of my favorite mm. spots here. Ellery's digging into the eggs, Benny, which is absolutely fantastic. Hash but, browns uh, too. Mm. Every city has some issues, Ellery. Yes. Underlying is issues is in all true. of the cities. So I figured out what those issues are here in Northeast Minneapolis. Take a look. So Northeast Minneapolis is known for many things. And one of the most infamous things they're known for are these turkeys. They just roam everywhere. They can be kind of mean. So besides the turkeys that roam freely, owning the streets like gangs and West Side Story, oh, and a lot of you mentioned the acorn issue a few times. Apparently they're littering the streets. But one of the biggest issues that a lot of you mentioned was the influx of all the luxury housing that's being built. I went to talk with Kevin Reich. He's the city councilman representing the people of Northeast. Here's what he had to say about the luxury housing issue. Uh, one of the ways we're combating that is to make sure that all the housing projects that are north of Broadway, which is the beginning of the arts district and the beginning of the sort of working class part of Northeast, stays that way. And so every unit that we've built in the last five years has been affordable. We also want to make sure that our zoning and planning codes suggest that we want to protect small businesses, the artists, and people who have to have workforce housing. All right, you guys, and we got our favorite sunriser right here. His name is Hayden <laughs> Ostergar. He's my nephew. Aww. He lives in Northeast area. They visit often. Yeah. And uh, he's not part of the issues here. He's part of the, the solution. The solution. In the Northeast you neighborhood. are the solution. Hayden. He's so cute. All right, we're going to send it back to you guys. I mean, we have to end on babies, right? There right. you go. Yes. Can't beat that. Yeah, I think we should take a sunriser's poll to see if he is the solution to the actual <laughs> things going on in Northeast. <laughs> Let's well, check in with you guys in a little bit. Coming up on Sunrise, you have a chance to win a free trip to Vegas with one simple text. How easy is that? That's pretty easy. Then it has been in the work, works for years, but now the green light is up for the Southwest Light Rail. But is that $2 billion project worth it?